Can you believe we're already four days into the 11th month? And this November has quite a number of commemorative activities. There's Youth Month, Eat Jamaica Month, Parents Month, and more. But no worries as we here at Jamaica Magazine have you covered. Welcome to the program, I'm Theodore Henry. In today's show, Jamaica gets high praises from the International Monetary Fund. We share the good news of the country's progress. Plus, we place the spotlight on our youth. Here are the plans which are unfolding by the government for this crucial group, and we offer some advice for budding young entrepreneurs. All this awaits you right after the news. Fiscal consolidation. The centerpiece of the program has been the need to reduce our debt. Business reform. Make sure that we transform Jamaica to make it a place to do business easily. New and existing businesses will benefit from streamlined regulations and processes. And pursuing strategic investments while protecting the most vulnerable. The path we're on is the right path. The economy in Jamaica is turning. The fact that the international community is once again lending to Jamaica says something about their confidence in our policies. It is now time to actually stay the course, not to lose the benefits of the hard decisions that have been made. The Jamaican government is committed to continuing the process of reform. The government of Jamaica is on a mission, going for growth, staying the course and transforming the economy through its economic reform program. Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith, and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, November 4. As part of Jamaica's response to Ebola, the country is participating in an emergency risk communication training workshop now underway in Barbados. Representatives from participating countries are learning how to better communicate health risks and empower citizens in keeping with international health regulations. More than 100 delegates from 30 countries across the region have gathered for the three-day workshop which got underway on Tuesday. The workshop, which was organized by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, in partnership with the World Health Organization, WHO, will focus on illnesses like chikungunya, dengue, and Ebola. PAHO's director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, addressed participants at the opening ceremony. PAHO WHO is committed to bolstering all of the required skills in the countries to respond to a possible introductory case of Ebola in Latin America and the Caribbean and to contain it. Upon request, we will send in country missions. In the meantime, Jamaica is also being represented by the country's High Commissioner, Ambassador Sharon Saunders, at the 17th special meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government. The meeting, which is being held in Trinidad and Tobago, will focus on the threat of Ebola as well as the Caribbean's response to chikungunya. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health is assuring members of the public that Jamaica's contact tracing system is well equipped to locate and isolate individuals who may have been exposed to Ebola. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Dr. Kevin Harvey, says public health professionals have been trained to effectively conduct contact tracing. He says the Ministry's contact tracing system has been used effectively over the years to identify suspected cases of HIV, tuberculosis, measles and malaria. For Ebola, the additional step would be that we would be required to quarantine those persons who were in contact with somebody who had Ebola and to ensure that those persons remain within um, the quarantine space. And for that, we would require and we will have uh, support from the, from the police and the, 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 the JDF. Dr. Harvey was one of several guests outlining government's preparedness for the Ebola virus on a recently televised panel discussion. The program was an initiative of the Office of the Prime Minister. And members of Parliament have joined the national emergency response to the chikungunya outbreak by carrying out cleanup activities in their constituencies. The latest initiative took place over the weekend in West St. Andrew, where Member of Parliament Anthony Hilton, along with residents, removed debris from a number of communities, including Seaview and Coralville Gardens. A cleanup exercise is also scheduled this week in Waterhouse St. Andrew. We intend to, out of the adversity of chikungunya, bring to the public at large and a level of awareness about their role as well 
as to how they can contribute in their community to improve the conditions and to mitigate the risks to them and the community. In the meantime, the National Health Emergency Vector Control Cleanup Team, led by Colonel Daniel Price, destroyed mosquito breeding sites in Western Kingston last week. The team removed 19 loads of solid waste from sections of Tivoli Gardens to Marcus Garvey Drive. Plans are also in place for activities to continue this week in Denham Town and Hannah Town. Government has begun the process of merging the Jamaica Racing Commission, JRC, and the Betting, Gaming, and Lotteries Commission, the BGLC. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips told Parliament last Tuesday that under the first phase of the merger, the administrative operations of both companies were being combined. The merger will help to create a properly funded regulatory authority for the gaming and horse racing sectors. There is some legislative amendment that is necessary to effect the complete merger of the two um, entities and I expect that to be concluded shortly. But they are going to move operations into a single location. They are going to share the critical administrative staff and that should be, that is underway now. In the meantime, Dr. Phillips also told Parliament that the enterprise team overseeing the divestment of Caymanus Track Limited has already completed its analysis of the entity. And finally, the Minister of Education, Reverend Ronald Thwaites, is encouraging communities to be more active in the upbringing of the nation's children, especially those at the early childhood level. When we take our emphasis into the school system to encourage family life and parenting, may I suggest that we pay particular emphasis as a starting point at our parent places, at wherever we are, with the early childhood cohort. My own experience, however anecdotal, is that at, at, it is at that stage that parents seem to take a particular incipient interest in their child's future. Minister Thwaites was speaking on Friday at the launch of Parents Month, which is being commemorated under the theme Building Circles of Involvement, Home, School and Community. The minister also announced that during November, the Education Ministry will roll out the Valuable Pathways Program, which involves the integration of positive values and attitudes into the school curriculum. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching. This is Romain Virgo. I'm your appeal to all of the youths them to just stay away from crime and violence. We know the temptation, the money, the fast life. People say them rate you. But I will only take you nowhere. If you stay in school and focus, then you can achieve anything. Be your own leader. A gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. The Ebola virus is transmitted through direct contact with an infected person's blood or other bodily fluids like saliva, urine, stool and semen. Symptoms of Ebola include sudden fever, intense weakness, muscle pain, headache and sore throat. This may be followed by vomiting, diarrhea and rash, and in some cases both internal and external bleeding leading to death. Protect yourself. Avoid travel to Ebola-affected countries. Avoid contact with infected persons. Don't touch the body of someone who has died from Ebola. Wash hands frequently with soap and water and use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. To know more, call 1-888-663-5683. Jamaica's growth rate for this year is projected to be even stronger than last year. We are also now the highest ranked Caribbean country on the World Bank Ease of Doing Business report. We are definitely making major strides, and the progress was highlighted at a recent high-level Caribbean forum held in Montego Bay with international, regional, and local stakeholders. Here now how we're managing to unlock this economic growth. Unlocking economic growth. That was the theme for the 2014 High Level Caribbean Forum held on October 23 and 24 at the Montego Bay Convention Center. The event, which was hosted by the Ministry of Finance and the International Monetary Fund IMF, brought together high-ranking government and private sector officials from several Caribbean countries, as well as senior officials from the IMF, the Caribbean Development Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank and the World Bank. The forum focused on three key areas which, if properly addressed, should help Caribbean economies expand. Energy efficiency and reliability, their tax systems, and financial sector resilience. 
With oil and gas being the main sources of fuel for Caribbean countries, participants in the 2014 Hall of a Caribbean Forum have agreed to embark on a comprehensive strategy to reduce their energy bills by diversifying their sources of energy. Participants consider the development of renewable energy should be encouraged by increasing the share of them in the overall energy mix. Nonetheless, there was a recognition that oil and gas-based electricity generation will continue to dominate for some time. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller, who officially opened the forum, pointed out that Jamaica was already implementing strategies to cut the country's oil import bill by diversifying the fuel mix. The government has been pursuing renewable energy sources like wind and solar while promoting energy conservation. The electricity sector enterprise team ESET is also working on a plan to replace old and inefficient power generating units with modern ones using cheaper alternatives to oil. The committee reported to cabinet in September on a generation plan which provides for a mix of LNG, ethane and coal being the fuels. The Electricity supplied by the country's long-term provider, JPSCO, and two of the alumina plants. Preliminary studies show that this would reduce the cost of energy by 30% by 2018, saving the country about $350 million. In the meantime, experts who gave presentations at the High Level Forum warned that the Petro-Caribe agreement between Venezuela and some Caribbean countries may be under threat. Under the agreement, signatories to the agreement pay Venezuela upfront for 60% of the cost of the oil they receive. The other 40% is payable over 25 years at an interest rate of 1% per annum. It might be only a matter of time uh, until Venezuela is not able to afford any longer to subsidize uh, exports of his own oil to the region, therefore something that countries in the region have to start to get ready for, because that might not be there in the next few years. So we are building our reserves in a way to compensate for any potential occurrence. In addition as well to, we have been broadening the arrangements for repayment of Venezuela through the provision of goods um, in it, so far we have arranged a clinker deal which allows us to repay Venezuela in kind and not um, uh, cash. As part of the strategy to grow regional, participants in the 2014 High Level Caribbean Forum also discussed means of improving the tax system. We need to ensure that we don't have different states within the region competing with each other as far as um, uh, investment attraction is taking place. And that finding the right balance between attracting foreign and local investment, investment and raising revenues should be the guiding principle in determining tax regime. And so it was agreed that Caribbean countries need to coordinate tax types and rates across the region. Participants stress the need for a robust financial sector that safeguards financial stability, ensures strong financial institutions and plays the financing role that these economies need to support growth and, as I said, employment creation and financial inclusion. That too was a key focus area for participants in the 2014 High Level Caribbean Forum, making the region's financial sector more resilient to shocks. Stakeholders say they will be working on a plan to strengthen the framework for bank regulation and supervision. Cross-border collaboration should be promoted to limit uh, spillovers when financial problems arise in one country, therefore limiting the impact to the region. There was also an agreement that more persons should be included in the formal financial sector and that micro, small and medium-sized enterprises needed more access to credit to develop their businesses. The IMF also used the forum to commend Jamaica's performance under the Extended Fund Facility. Deputy Managing Director of the IMF Minzu said Jamaica's macroeconomic foundation was stronger because, among other things, the Jamaican dollar had regained competitiveness, the debt had been reduced, and the business environment had improved. The latest World Bank study shows that Jamaica now has the Caribbean's highest ranking on the Ease of Doing Business report, moving to 58 among 189 world economies. After years of struggling with a weak economic growth, with a high debt, the first time we'll be able to achieve the government deficits almost close to zero. 
and the primary debt government budget is a surplus of 7.5% of GDP. By all forecasts, the growth this year will be stronger than last year. And more even important is for next year, the growth will be stronger than this year. But meanwhile, the fiscal deficit will drop to almost zero, the debt is on downsize. So I think it's absolutely a miracle. It's a great achievement by the Jamaica government. So what's the plan going forward? Achieving appreciable, sustainable and equitable economic growth in Jamaica, coupled with job creation, must be the prize for the extreme sacrifices our people have been making in our efforts to put our economy on the right track once and for all. The 2014 High Level Caribbean Forum at the Montego Bay Convention Center, placing emphasis on energy, the tax system, and making the financial sector more resilient. Critical areas that, if appropriately dealt with, will lead to economic growth in the Caribbean. There'll be a better tomorrow. 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 There'll be a day. There'll be a way. There'll come a time to sing a brand new song. There'll be a better tomorrow. The Ministry of Youth and Culture is spending $322 million, that's a big number, right? To provide training for people like you to go to the Caribbean Maritime Institute. We're also providing training for you to go and study agriculture, to study information and communication technologies, so that we can prepare you for the job market that will exist. Yes, it was an energetic and fun time recently as the 2014 Youth Month launch activity was held in Halfway Tree. The theme for that event and all others in November is Youth Advance, Not Leaving It to Chance. Government is determined to ensure that the future of our youth is not left to chance and has been carefully delivering a number of plans and programs to help young people develop. Focused on improving conditions for children and adolescents in need of care and protection. Strategic in seeking greater opportunities for youth empowerment. Deliberate in enhancing Brand Jamaica through cultural policy and industries framework. The working targets for the Ministry of Youth and Culture in financial year 2014-2015. I can confidently say that the Ministry of Youth and Culture has been doing our part to work and certainly improve the lives of children in Jamaica. And the 2014-2015 fiscal year is no different, so the Ministry has dedicated $1.7 billion to the year's task. Among the targets, reviewing the licensing regime for the 50 privately run residential childcare facilities on the island. The aim of this exercise is to ensure that all entities licensed to operate as children's homes and places of safety, not only have the physical facilities, but are also fit and proper with staff and the requisite training and experience to offer the new standards of care that we will be insisting this year upon them. The Ministry will also be implementing a $58 million three-year case management system to standardize and harmonize services to children. 
that will make it possible to track a child from entry into the system until he or she leaves. The system will also allow for the seamless sharing of information between the CDA and other child-serving institutions. In the meantime, a new board is overseeing the transformation of the Maxfield Park Children's Home into the island's model child care facility. To cater to children with physical, psychological and behavioural health problems, the Ministry has partnered with Jamaica Social Investment Fund to construct a therapeutic centre. The Child Development Agency is supporting the action through its parental assistance and training programme. Meanwhile, review of the Child Care and Protection Act is progressing smoothly and amendments are now before the Attorney General. The 1958 Adoption of Children Act is also under review to make it harmonious with the Trafficking in Persons Act. Empowering our young people by creating favorable conditions for them to develop their talents and actively participate in the labor market is essential for the economic and social development and for achieving our vision and our goals for Vision 2030. And so the ministry through the National Youth Service has introduced or expanded its programs to cater to the diverse needs of Jamaica's young. $124 million have been set aside for new programs. A combined $55 million will help 1,700 young people access entrepreneurship support through two different programs. 10% of the space in the Entrepreneurship 101 program has been reserved for youth with physical and developmental challenges. A special empowerment program for 100 youth with intellectual disabilities will also be rolled out. And another 4,000 young people will be impacted by a program dubbed Youth Roadmap to Succeed. This is to make sure that they receive the cutting edge training that is now being in used internationally to transition from school to work. And we're committing $40 million to this new project. A $20 million enrichment program for 500 at-risk youth is also planned. An $8 million partnership with the CPTC will deliver training and work experience in animation, graphic design and videography to 40 youth. Another $8 million has been allotted to an events management and production program being facilitated by the JCDC. $176 million will be used to execute existing successful programs at the NYS, benefiting more than 5,000 young people. These include the graduate work experience, summer work, access to higher education, and financial assistance programs. Community-based development projects will also be targeted through the NYS's volunteer program at a cost of $16 million. We are doing this as we intend to impact over 11,500 young people this year to the tune of $322 million towards ensuring them that we get them equipped, involved and productive. My name is Jason Ricketts and I employ all youth with disability to not give up hope. There is a space out there for you, you just need to work hard and I'm sure that your training will help Jamaica move forward to meet the Vision 2030 plan. If you've got an idea, start today. There's no better time than now to get going. That doesn't mean quit your job and jump into your idea 100% from day one, but there's always small progress that can be made to start the movement. That's from Kevin Sistrom, co-founder of the popular social media site, Instagram. All around the world, young entrepreneurs are not only emerging, but making billions. Think Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's founder. And in Jamaica, we too have multiple talents and skills to make it to the top. If you're an aspiring young entrepreneur, here's another way to not leave things to chance. The foundations of corporate empires are usually rooted in the minds of young, bright men and women who've dared the risks of becoming entrepreneurs. 
First, identifying opportunities that can create wealth, products and services that are in demand, and meeting those needs with unique innovation. Planning and establishing a business is no easy task, and operating successfully for any extended period is an even tougher job. But Jamaica's youth entrepreneurship policy and strategy gives young people with good business ideas a chance to operate more thriving long-term businesses and create their own income. Youth entrepreneurship is encouraged by both public and private organizations. It is also being fostered within schools and communities to instill the business bug early. And with more young persons owning businesses, they'd be helping to drive economic development and job creation, all of which can make a difference in the lives of other people. And that explains why support has been growing in areas of financing for startup and business experience. Government over the years has established various agencies for helping the youth set up and run their businesses. The National Center for Youth Development, NCYD, for example, continues to empower youth in entrepreneurship. Both attached and unattached young people are able to benefit from access to information through the establishment of youth information centers across the island and various programs that include training. Government has partnered with organizations such as Jamaica Youth Business Trust, to provide venture capital funds for persons under the age of 30, collateral requirement being only a sound business plan and a willingness to accept a mentor from the private sector. There is also the Youth Entrepreneurship Program, YEP, giving school leavers at the secondary and tertiary levels with strong entrepreneurial spirits the benefit of training and access to financing. Youths also have access to various business support services provided by the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the premier business support organization. From the conception of a business idea, young entrepreneurs can get help through the stages of developing the business, planning, financing, starting, marketing, and growing. Indeed, the window of opportunity is open for all youths to access business support at the highest professional levels. Innovative Jamaicans between ages 12 to 25, submit your entries for the Climate Change Logo Competition, an initiative of the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change. Your work could be the new brand for the Ministry's Climate Change Division. I challenge all the entrants to become change champions, change champions in response to climate change. The competition will run until November 14, so start creating your logo now. For further information, contact the Ministry of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change at 9261590 or visit their website at www.mwlecc.com. You not fans, not leaving in top. All right, do not leave anything to chance any at all. To begin the construction of a house or property, you first need a plan. Likewise, don't allow your life to go idly by and simply leave things to chance. Create a plan of action. That's my word of advice as we close the pages of our magazine today. We welcome your feedback, so send an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm and you may also go on our website, jis.gov.jm, to see the latest news and happenings or check out our YouTube page at Watch JIS to catch previous programs and features. For this edition of Jamaica Magazine, I'm Theodore Henry. See you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.